not one that one. Yeah. Trying to move away. I'll call the meeting to order. This is our regular meeting postponed um, two days. Uh, meeting number 12 of 95-96, January 10th, 1996. The roll call, please, by the town clerk. Chairman Cogsall. Here. Council Chapel. Yeah. Council Jordan. Yep. Council Linnell. Here. Council McGinty. Here. Council McLaughlin. Here. And Council Reed. Here. Uh, would you join us in pledging allegiance to the flag? <laughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have the citizens' discussion period of items not on the agenda. There being no citizens coming forward, we'll move on to reports and correspondence. Madam Chair. <laughs> Yes. You all yeah. ready? Yes. Okay. A regional waste meeting of the subcommittee was uh, last Thursday. We met for about three and a half hours, and uh, we're getting revenue approaches pretty well under control. It's quite a job, which I want everybody to realize, and I hope we come up with a good plan. We're going to come up with a plan a lot quicker than they're doing in Washington, I'll guarantee you that. The, uh, <laughs> when we take uh, Cape Elizabeth with 100% residential waste for all practical purposes, probably 98.9, .9, who knows, but it's very, very close. And we have to, just using figures so that everybody can understand it, we'll say at $100 a ton to get rid of it. And then we have Portland. I don't like to pick them out, but they're easy to understand. Uh, when they've got 85% commercial and 15% residential, uh, their residential waste of 15% at $100 and their 85% commercial waste at $50. You can see the problems that we have when we discuss it. All of the small towns, uh, not against, but kind of uh, looking at the big towns for leadership because they've got to be some kind of a rebate program that will help the Cape so that we don't get the brunt of everything being residential and getting the high rate. I, for one, would want to see the two rates down together and that's what we're fighting for. Our next meeting is next uh, Thursday night at 5 o'clock, and then a full board meeting at 7 o'clock that night to discuss these. That brings you up to date on that. I got one other thing I'd like to speak briefly about tonight, if you'll stay with me. I'll finish five years on the council this year, and I wouldn't bring it up tonight. I'd wait a little later, but I think it's only fair where the clerk is going to have nomination papers on the 14th of February available in the town office that I let you know that I'll not be running again as a counselor. It's been a rewarding experience, one I'll always be glad I decided to do five years ago. We're fortunate in Cape Elizabeth to have such wonderful groups to work with. Manager, I've been on two great trips with him, one to Washington and one to Dallas. I'll never forget them, never forget the pictures, never forget the association. Department heads, we got some of the best. You can look a long ways to beat any one of them. The workers, the people, it's, it's really been a, a pleasure and I've had a lot of fun. When I first ran five years ago, we had four persons running for one seat. I hope we can do that again. The second time that I was fortunate enough to run, we had five persons running for two seats. I hope that this election this spring, we can do this all over again. There's going to be two seats open, mine and Rosemary's. If she decides to run, makes no difference. Let's get five running for two seats, four at the minimum. I would like to ask everybody that's within earshot of these microphones tonight to, uh, to really look at it and see if they haven't got a few hours each week to give and service for their town. I hate to see uncontested elections. I don't think they're healthy at all. Don't forget now, the 14th, Debbie has papers, and you that can, I urge you to get up here and take your papers out, and let's make it a real good old election. Finally, I want to thank all of you for letting me be your counselor. It's been fun, and I'll miss it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Councillor Chapel. I've certainly enjoyed working with you all these years. Councillor Reed. 
Thank you. Well, Arvid, it was my seat that you took. Yeah. <laughs> so to I'm really glad that you were there. You want to be careful. Uh, I, Madam Chairman, under correspondence, since um, I received a copy, as all counselors did, a copy of correspondence from MMA and Chris Lockwood regarding the workers' comp bid, I would like to publicly commend the town manager for his efforts to go out and try to get the most competitive workers' comp rates and benefits for the town. And I think it's notable that over the next two years, uh, the town manager has secured for us uh, approximately a 30% reduction for the town and the school in workers' comp rates, and I think that that is notable. Thank you. Any other reports and correspondence? Councillor Linnell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I want to say uh, I've really enjoyed working with Councillor Chapel. Um, there is one point I'd make, though. Uh, I certainly hope we have a, lot of, a good field of candidates for the next election. However, there are uh, special times when the, uh, there are uncontested elections, such as in May of 94, for example, when the, co the community feels very comfortable with the candidate and, uh, the, uh, yeah, and it works out well. Uh, sec, my, uh, I have a couple announcements. One is uh, I've been chosen to uh, represent Maine in the National League of Cities uh, Policy Committee on Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources. And uh, finally, on January 25th, I'll be uh, making a presentation to the Standing Committee on Utilities at the Legislature. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports and correspondence? <coughs> um, I believe our town clerk has an announcement she'd like to make. Thank you very much. As Councillor Chapel indicated, uh, it is time to start thinking about the municipal election. It is held the first Tuesday in May, which is Tuesday, May 7th. Nomination papers are available in my office beginning on Wednesday, February 14th. The papers are due back on Monday, March 25th. There are two seats available, both on the town council and on the school board. In order to qualify, you must be a registered voter of Cape Elizabeth, and you must obtain between 25 and 100 signatures of registered voters in Cape Elizabeth. So I would, as Councillor Chapel does, encourage anyone to come see me if you'd like to take out papers, and we are available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. I just would like for general public information that we have hired a new uh, police officer, Eric Fay, who is replacing Katie Foley. He's a graduate of the University of Southern Maine, where he received a BA in criminology. He has worked part-time at the Old Orchard Beach Police Department and for the Cumberland County Sheriff. He will later in the year be attending the Police Academy in Waterville. And also, the library has relocated two of its rooms. The main collection has been moved to the old office of the library director, and the Zimprich collection is now beginning to be placed in the poetry and writing room which was formerly the home of the main collection. I also would like to acknowledge the receipt of the interim report of the Pedals and Pedestrian Committee, which has been meeting um, since last summer and has been working really hard and hope to have a final report, I believe, by May. On to um, the minutes of meeting number 11. Madam Chair, I move we accept the minutes. Oh, second. Any discussion? All in favor? On to our public hearings. Uh, the first is the unsafe structure at 537 Shore Road. Mr. McGovern, do you want to give us a little update on that, please? Yes, very briefly. Uh, the code enforcement officer, uh, Ernest McVeigh, is here as well this evening. Uh, should the council have any questions or anyone else in attendance have any questions? Uh, we have received a number of calls over the last few months about the condition of 537 Shore Road, which is the old uh, basics uh, store uh, that's across from the cookie jar. Uh, we have, Ernie in particular, has, has tried to work with the owner uh, for some time to encourage them to secure the structure and to begin to make improvements. Uh, back in November, he finally indicated to them that they needed to uh, take out their building permit uh, or else. Uh, subsequently, they took out their building permit, but there was concern 
that they may not follow through on it. Uh, as a result of that, uh, the Council last month scheduled a public hearing uh, for Monday evening uh, on this particular uh, issue. Uh, the notices were given uh, to, to the owners of the property about that hearing. Uh, working with Ernie uh, in, at his encouragement, uh, and I think as a result of the Council action, uh, Mr. Burgess, the owner of the property, did get the message that it was time to begin work. Uh, there is a significant amount of work that uh, has been completed uh, on the structure. Uh, there is still more to do. Uh, it's the staff's recommendation uh, that you do two things with this item. The recommendation initially was that you table it to the February 12th meeting uh, it's to, to see if more work has been done. But an additional recommendation this evening would be you also schedule a, a public hearing for that evening. Uh, so that there is uh, notice of it, uh, whereas uh, you know the original plan was sort of continue the public hearing, but because of the, the rescheduling of this evening's meeting, it would seem appropriate to uh, schedule uh, a new public hearing. Thank you. Any comments, Councillor Linnell? You ready for a motion? Okay. <clears throat> I move that we uh, uh, table this item to the February 12th uh, council meeting. And pu scheduled public hearing, same night. Seven. Seven thirty. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Our second public hearing is the change in the sewer fees. Mr. McGovern. Yes. Yeah, so on this particular issue, we we sent out uh, for Monday evening's meeting uh, about fifty notices of the hearing. Uh, we also uh, had an ad in the newspaper, however, uh, since there really isn't a procedure for continuing a public hearing from Monday to Wednesday night, I would recommend that you uh, uh, table this item and uh, schedule a new public hearing for February 12th. Councilor Reed. Madam Chairman, I move that we table this item and schedule it to, for a public hearing on February 12th at 7.30 in the Town Hall. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's a 7-0. We essentially have taken care of items number 90 and 91 since we didn't actually have public hearings. Moving on to item number 92, to consider a proposed open space impact fee and take any necessary action. Mr. McGinty or Mr. McGovern? Um, I can handle this. Um, as you know, last month at the uh, town council meeting, we enacted a new open space impact um, the ordinance of the subdiv subdivision ordinance. Um, and in light of that, um, we need to add to the town fee schedule um, the actual what the actual impact fee will be. And uh, so I would move that we add to the town fee schedule um, open space impact fee per lot slash unit of 0 0.208 acres of land or Two thousand and eighty dollars. Second. There also was a consideration to um, make this effective January twelfth, which is thirty days after the enactment. So therefore, it would be everything would go into effect at the same time. Yeah, I would uh, amend my motion to include that effective January twelfth. And the second amendment. Yes, please. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion to 7 0. On to item number 93 to consider approving a request from Engine One Company to use Fort Williams Park for their annual art show on September 1st, 1996. And take any necessary action, Mr. McGovern. Yes, uh, this has been a, a fairly long time tradition. The, the art show first started. Uh, down to two lights, uh, Jim Ledbetter uh, got it started as it grew in years. Uh, uh, over the years, Engine One became the sponsor, moved to Ford. It's a very nice event, and they'd like permission to use the park on September 1st with a rain date of September 2nd, which is Labor Day. Uh, we're already looking ahead to the end of summer. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? That's a 7-0. On to item number 94 
to acknowledge the receipt of the proposed capital improvement plan for fiscal years 1997 through 2001 and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, one of the Town Council goals for this year uh, is to develop and improve the process for capital improvement planning in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, what the Council has before it this evening is uh, the beginnings of an improved plan. I think it still needs some work, but we, we are progressing and I think doing a better job of it each year. The, the, there's really two truly significant changes this particular year in the plan. Uh, one is the fact that the Cape Elizabeth School Department is now included as well. Uh, it was desired that there be a, uh, uh, a joint plan uh, involving both the school and the town. And I think as you look at some of the numbers in years ahead, this really shows the benefit of coordinating projects uh, among the town and the school department. If there's particular projects that create a burden on the school side in one particular year, the town side can uh, hold back a little bit if there's things that need to be done on the, 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 the opposite. Uh, the, the opposite side can hold back. So I think it, it works fairly well. Uh, because of that, uh, there's a school bus on the, on the cover to really symbolically indicate that we're, we're moving down the same road together. Uh, I think it's also significant that there's a stop sign <coughs> that appears on, on most buses. And uh, I think there's also a sub subliminal message uh, with, with the stop sign in that, uh, you know, as much as we, we need to move forward, we also have to be very, very cautious that, uh, that there are limits on the ability to pay. Uh, nonetheless, as you look in the plan, uh, it is ambitious. Uh, it, it very much uh, has an emphasis on maintaining our existing infrastructure, our existing buildings, uh, maintaining uh, regular replacement schedules for all of our vehicles, and that's really the, the second major change in this is that every, all of the major vehicles are now included in this plan and every one of them has an identified replacement date, uh, which was never the case before, uh, so that uh, we can really begin to see the, the effort that we need to be putting forward uh, each year in this regard. Uh, beyond that, it's a lot of money. Uh, it's uh, over a million dollars a year proposed each and every year, which uh, compares to just under a million this past year about 100,000 more this coming year. Uh, it's believed that that can be done within existing revenues without uh, increasing taxes at all. However, in succeeding years, we begin to look at the need for two major projects. Uh, one is the renovation of Cape Elizabeth High School pool, uh, which uh, is in difficult shape, and there's a report in here indicating some work that needs to be done on that. Uh, the pool is now uh, 25 years old in that high humidity environment. Uh, things tend to wear out a lot faster than uh, they do in other locations. Uh, it also is, I think everyone's aware, it gets a tremendous uh, amount of use. Uh, the second major issue and uh, major uh, concern facing us is a committee that involves a committee that Council of Chapel has been chairing, and that's looking at the public safety space needs for the police and fire department. And uh, uh, his committee has, has really been doing a great job uh, looking at that issue and my expectation, Irv, is you'll be coming out with a report by April. Or March sooner, meeting of the council. At the March meeting of the council, so uh, that's really coming along. But I really do uh, appreciate the efforts of all the department heads and the school department in working with this, and uh, I think it's a, it's a good start. Uh, we'll be improving the format <coughs> a little bit uh, more next year and uh, really trying to look at the numbers a lot more to see uh, how we can make this work to best serve the citizens. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And this was primarily staff input, and um, the council will be reviewing this in the budget process. Is that correct? The councilors who are involved with the budget goal will probably have more in-depth discussions with you. That's right. And a, and a number of the, the major issues on this, the council will be looking at more in-depth in the coming months. The, the pool, you'll, uh, there'll be a recommendation coming forward that you form a committee. To, to look at the pool. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Irv's committee is looking at public safety and there'll be an emphasis on that. And beyond that, I hope to you know, continue the process of, of having a, a different report at the council meeting every month that focuses on subsections of departments uh, within this. I think that's been an interesting process and 
uh, one that uh, is beneficial to council. I, I find it interesting, and I hope citizens do as well. Thank you. Councilor McGinty. I move uh, acknowledgement of receipt of the proposed capital improvement uh, plan for fiscal years 1997 through 2001. Second. Discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to say that that's a tremendous job that the managers and the department has to put together, and it's going to be a great help, I think, as a guy more than anything else, a good guy to go on as you're put, trying to put your budgets together. I think it's great. We've and been, I second it also. We've been working towards this for a great number of years, and it's nice to actually see it happen while we're still here. <laughs> Any other comments? Some of you still here. <laughs> I'm talking about Janet and myself and Billy. Uh, all those in favor? 7-0. On to item number 95, to consider approving the warrants for period of December 11th, 1995 to January 8th, 1996, and take any necessary action. <coughs> Madam Chairman, I move that we approve the warrants for the period December 11, 1995 to January 8, 1996, in that they are in conformance and doing this in conformance with the state statutes to approve financial warrants. Second. Discussion? Yes. Just wanted to mention that the State and Local Government Committee is holding a hearing on January 16th at 1 p.m. Uh, on a bill that would uh, change this process. and. Uh, Councillor Cogswell and I will be attending, uh, Chairman Cogswell and I will be attending that hearing uh, of the committee uh, that's co-chaired, uh, Senate Chair is Senator Jane Amaro, uh, who is also the sponsor of the bill. All those in favor? 7-0. On to item number 96, to consider entering into executive session to review a request for a poverty abatement and to discuss property acquisition disposition matter and take any necessary action. So moved. Second. All those in favor? I believe we will not be coming back into public session that we will go, we will adjourn from that point. Thank you all for joining us. Just one more thing, I, before we finish, I really want to thank uh, the Public Works Department for allowing us to come tonight. Uh, <laughs> That's true. They've, they've done, I think, a, a really fine job. Uh, the, the hours they've been putting in has been unbelievable, and I admire their patience, their skill, uh, and certainly their, their dedication to the town. I also want to make mention of uh, a lot of the volunteer firemen have been uh, cleaning out the fire hydrants uh, constantly, and that's a, that's a real tough job with, you know, not with a lot of handwork, and uh, very important, and I do want to thank them and uh, everyone else who uh, has been very good in uh, working with us on the storms. I agree. I, I think I've been asked 50 times in the last two days, how's the budget doing? And <laughs> my, my response is, uh, it really doesn't matter that uh, uh, we, we're, we're not going to waste money, but we're going to spend all the money necessary to get the job done. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Okay, we will now um, adjourn to the executive session. Just a minute. I, oh. Do you have a time on that meeting in Augusta? 16? 1 o'clock. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Yes. Might go. We'll carpool up if you want to go. Thank you very much.